Well, what are we up to today? Well, I've got a little job. This should be hopefully a quick one. It's a little set of uh, electric clippers and um, it's uh, it's done a battery. I've already had this open and diagnosed that why it's that's why it's in pieces. But uh, we also have a replacement battery. These are a little 3.6 volt lithium ion, um, and these are a they're not an 18650. They're a, a 14550 or a little one. Uh, the one in this is a 750 milliamp. This one's an 800. The technology sort of moved on a little bit. Um, and with this guy, nothing is actually screwed in, so we can just literally lift the board out of here. And get away with the bits we don't need to know about for the moment. And uh, we're basically going to take out the two solder tabs here, lift this off the board and put a new one in. So let's get some tools out and get sorted. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of this uh, tape on here, which is uh, looks like fancy captain tape or coloured stuff. Be high temperature tape. Not probably strictly necessary, but I think that's what they use to hold it in place before they solder it. Next thing I want to do is observe the polarity here and mark it on the board, so I don't so I don't do something stupid. So that's our negative, and that end is clearly our positive, and it is marked on the battery. So that'll be good. We can pull that off. All right. Now we get the soldering iron warmed up and we find our desoldering tool and a little bit of flux and we'll rip the battery off. Alright, we've got a camera angle a little bit different here and uh, we're going to um, get our soldering iron warmed up and turn our extraction on which is noisy. So you guys will have to deal with that. Got our iron nice and hot now. It's going to be fun, I have to reach around the camera here but uh, we're going to put a little bit of flux core solder on here just to help get this fluid. And then I'm going to get our desoldering tool. I'm going to try and just remove as much from this pad as I can. Mostly so that... Um, oh, <laughs> I'm touching one of the connections and making the motor move, so I need to be careful of that. And I need to lengthen my soldering iron wire, so give me a moment. Alright, let's have another shot at this now. I've got some room to move with the iron. I don't like working live with stuff like this, it can be a problem. Yep, I see the tab here, they've, they've definitely uh, inserted the tab and then folded it over, which is not great. So I need to spit some solder out of the desoldering tool here and remove some of that. So I'm starting to get down here, I'm removing a little bit at a time, but it's still going to be an interesting process to uh, to get this bit off. I might end up actually having to chop that terminal with a pair of cutters and get it out. So we'll be back in a minute when I manage to get that up. Once I've figured that out, then we'll do the other one. So we came up with a solution here. Um, I chopped one terminal and heated this one while I manipulated this out. Now I've just got the problem of um, this one hiding in here. So we'll get that out and uh, we'll probably take a few shots with the desoldering tool on that one. I'll position it on the blue tack here so we've got a bit of air gap behind it because if I do what I'm doing right there the soldering tool won't pull it through the hole so now we need to a bit more flux core 6040 tin lead there and we will check our iron on here and pull it through the hole a bit at a time certainly didn't want these tabs coming out Now I've got the tab here, we might be able to actually heat it with the iron and actually push it through at the same time. This could be a bit of a challenging shot to get. I think we'll get it out. Hanging out the bottom. I need like three hands for this, so we'll be back in a moment. Have our terminals clear. Now we'll open our new battery, which we managed to get the one from JCAR that has the solder tabs. Now if you're doing this yourself, um, I'll have to look up the part number and put it in the description, but uh, we'll do that in a minute. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you search the JCAR website for a 14550 battery, you'll find this. Now what I want to do here is I want to be really careful and just make sure I've got the, um, the polarity correct. I'm going to mark this with a permanent marker, 
which I have over here somewhere. Oh yes, that's another thing we'll do. Um, we have some promotional material in the background here too. The JCAR mug. We're going to actually um, put, uh, we're going to probably try and laser etch or stencil the actual exact JCAR store that that came from and give them a bit of a plug on here as well. But uh, anyway, now we're sure we've got our battery correct. So uh, now we're going to get our insulation off our terminals and get that inserted in the board. All right, we've gone to fit our battery in, and I know this is the wrong way around, but our solder tabs are too broad, so we're going to have to trim them down. I'm hoping these are tinned copper ones, so if I can do this on, on camera, I'm going to try and take the side off it a little bit here, like that. And there's probably a bit of an altercation going on in the street, but uh, for this street, there's nothing unusual. You might hear it over the top. But uh, that's a problem for the local constabulary to sort out. They're here about six times a week sorting them out. So we're all pretty used to it. All right. So I think I've managed to narrow that solder tab down a little bit. We'll do the same to the other and we'll be back. All right. We've got our battery in and our battery terminals a little bit shorter. We're going to snip these guys off a bit. Um, otherwise, we risk shorting out on the board. Now, one of the things that makes me nervous about this is um, working live here with my cutters like that and potentially shorting out things. So we're going to fold these guys over. That one needs to be a little shorter. This one looks good. So that one needs to come out a little bit and hopefully we don't bust this when we drop this solder tab on the board. There we go and uh, I'm going to use something non-metallic. And fold that over and we'll get some solder onto it which I have on hand good old flux core now we need to do extraction because I don't like breathing in lead fumes I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to me over here let's get this guy in we'll do that and we'll try and flow a good bit in underneath that tab there all right We'll leave the fan on for a couple of seconds. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our trusty cheapo meter because my good expensive one lives in the vehicle. Now I should add that to my shopping list and buy a decent extra meter. That might be another job for JCAR. So let's get my hand over here. Check this tab here and this tab here. Where it is correct and it is on 3.8 volts. Turn our extraction fan off. And we will get ourselves over the other side here and just see if our motor turns on. Which doesn't appear to be turning on. I hope it didn't cook anything. We might give it a jump start with the, um, the charger and see if that fires it up. And uh, hopefully we'll have a working pair of clippers. Moment to examine things here first before I plug anything in. Now I did briefly short circuit things before and that was between... Um, this pad here and this corner here which was just creating ground to the battery and it looks like it's a common positive to the battery and they're regulating or doing the pulse width modulation on the ground um, so I think maybe we've upset the battery circuit so we're going to give it a kick start with this all right so we have a pretty blue light which is nice can we get we can get motor on the charger, but it's really slow. Whoop, the switch is a little bit dicky. Now we've got motor moving. All right, let's unplug. So we are running off the battery now, and it will turn on and off using the battery. So we'll give it a charge while we find all the other case parts, and we'll reassemble, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But it's reassembly time. So... Our major, or the main event here is on charge. I'm going to unplug that for the moment. Now, we're going to insert our little rubber damper. I think this is for noise reduction, which is appreciated. And it also provides some insulation from the end of the battery, which this one has it already included. But an extra layer of insulation on a LiPo is not, uh, not to be balked at. We do need to lift this up a little bit here, because we have our 
end insulator here. Pops in. Um, now these we do last. This goes on the top. Now we did, uh, oh, I've forgotten something really crucial actually. Uh, no, not yet. Okay, we have our little optic light spreader here. Or light diffuser, that goes in there. I think it holds in just with a bit of friction, so that'll be good. Now we can put our backing on. Oh, we probably need to put our motor in first. That would probably be a fairly important component to have in here. I'm going to fold our wires over here, hopefully out of the way of everything. Put the plastic backing on. Now I'm not sure uh, that if there's anything that should go in there, I'm not sure. That looks like... Uh, yes, there is. I've forgotten a crucial bit. There's a little plastic bar here that uh, operates the switch. So let's uh, find that bit. Right, we found our little uh, switch piece. This is... Um, seen things like this done in Land Rovers too. It sits over the switch body or the switch shaft there and drops down the side. And it all slides in here, which... We can get it in the right way. It goes in these forks. Um, it doesn't feel like it's in right, but it looks like it is. That's an interesting way of getting the switch contacts on the slimmest part, but uh, definitely um, all credit to them for the design there. Now I think our cables aren't interfering with any screw positions. Get a little magnetic screwdriver here. This is a um, an insulated screwdriver that was given to me by a Schneider Electric rep when uh, I worked for an electrical contractor. Um, and it's probably the best screwdriver I've had and it's actually the perfect size for pretty well everything I do. Um, I do obviously have full screwdriver sets but I think I ended up nicking off with two of these. Um, he used to keep giving them to us and uh, yeah there was a bit of a, um, always a, a bit of competition for who got the reps screwdrivers. But um, I was lucky enough to score two of them. So uh, happy about that. We're almost done here. We'll get the rest of these screws in and we'll be back for the finale. Alright, so all our screws are in and we want to get, uh, where are we, over here. There is a magnet in here that was stuck in with a bit of blue tack um, so it didn't drop out. And there are these two little depressions in here that I assume are meant to hold that right in the back of the shaft. Now the interesting bit is that little stalk for whatever reason pokes through that hole um, which means we need to manipulate that wire out of the way. That is going to be difficult but I think I have a pair of tweezers that are up to the job. Here we go, we can pull that out of the way, hopefully we don't let the magic smoke out of it doing this. The wire's out of the way, the hole there, that should go in nicely. And all snap in. And we have, see if it works. And of course, it doesn't. So that's why we test assemble it before we give it back to the owner. Now, it could be just a matter of charging. No, I think we've got a switch contact problem. So we're going to have to pull it apart again. But that's not unexpected. So, problem solved. When we stuck this magnet in with a bit of blue tack to stop it falling out during assembly, the blue tack had squashed out through that hole and had ended up making contact with the shaft of this piece here and stalling it so it wouldn't fire up. But that's okay. Now we have that bit sorted out. Um, and it was worth doing. We'll try and push our clamshells back together, which is not obviously going to go together for the camera. We had this all nutted out and rehearsed before but it didn't go together. Now we're together we have the same problem. Okay back to the drawing board. Alright we've got everything um, fairly well in and it functions properly now. It is a little bit flat but we'll get there. Um, now we've got the head here with this section that slides backwards and forwards here. It's a tiny bit stiff so we're going to put just the tiniest little drop of sewing machine oil on here and let it wick its way across. And that has instantly freed up much more. So that should be a lot better. And just a little bit in this cup here that is going to be the main friction surface. 
so we really only need like less than three drops for this all right now we should be able to get you on the top here i'll figure that out off camera because that's a confusing arrangement all right we have the head on and functional and i don't i'm not really the hairy arm sort so i can't really test this yeah. but um it's now decided not to work for the car oh, there we go it's working for the camera we'll try uh the owner's hair here we'll give it a little bit of a shave on the arm and <laughs> see what we get well, it looks like it's working so we won't make him look uh too uh, effeminate there but anyway so we've got functioning now we're just got to leave it to charge for a while anyway hope it was fun we'll see you all in the next one